Afternoon folks, the Chief Meteorologist Nick Lilia here with a look at your tropical update for September 11th of uh, 2019. As always, a tropical update brought to you by the good folks at uh, Pine Belt Gutters. Uh, solemn day, uh, we all know that. Uh, so I hope you're taking some time to be a little uh, reflective uh, on things uh, today. And as you know, we say, never forget. Uh, as far as the weather is concerned, into the Gulf of Mexico, we've got some showers and thunderstorms toward the Bay of Campeche, uh, kind of loosely associated with a mid-level area of low pressure, which is kind of floating around out here. We'll uh, take a peek at that on the water vapor here in a hot second. Invest in 95L, the center of this bad boy is probably right about there roughly. Uh, a lot of the thunderstorm activity is on the south and uh, east side of uh, what's out there. What else is out here? Well, we've got Invest 94L down here, which is barely holding on to life. And then we got another wave back in uh, behind that as well. Again, over on the water vapor, you can see a couple of different things happening. Here's uh, Invest 95L. It's uh, kind of interacting with an area of uh, mid-level uh, low pressure in here. We've got another one, which is actually retrograding. It's sagging back off to the southwest across parts of the southeast. You'll see it. There goes the front. Little piece breaks off. It's drifting back into the Gulf of Mexico. And then we got another one hanging out in part of South Texas, uh, which was actually pulling a little bit of dry air off the downslope front range of the Rockies across parts of South Texas and as far north as Houston. Well, that's in the mid-level of the, the dry air. Uh, and uh, maybe in the lower levels of the atmosphere, not down to the surface. It was still nice and humid in uh, Houston. And then, of course, we got more waves uh, just kind of uh, ramping off of the African coast here. Uh, the first one's right about, it's very loosely organized, kind of right in here. And then we got another one back here and another one back in uh, behind that. All right, let's get to, to the meat and taters here. Uh, 40 to 60 percent chance of development as we head through the next uh, two to five days uh, with, and there's kind of the X there, with uh, Invest in 95L as this thing drifts toward the Gulf of Mexico. There's now increased chance or an increased likelihood uh, that we start to see something before it actually gets to the Gulf of Mexico. You can see that the National Hurricane Center highlighting uh, all of the Bahamas, parts of Florida and into the Gulf of Mexico for development. I will say, I, I mentioned yesterday, uh, that the models were originally trending toward the Carolinas, then to Georgia, then to Florida, then through the Straits and toward the Gulf of Mexico, and then to the northern Gulf Coast. They've kind of pivoted back off to the northeast, uh, which means that uh, the uh, Bahamas and Florida are in play now, which kind of throws a wrench into uh, the forecasting process. Because we, a, a lot like Dorian, we just don't know how much this thing is going to interact with land, and thus making a forecast beyond that land interaction becomes very difficult, uh, which is why we try and compensate the good folks at the National Hurricane Center so well as taxpayers, uh, because they're real smart and really good at uh, what they do. Uh, I'll say that uh, we're going to have to be in wait and see mode, and you may have to be in wait and see mode until two days before it's knocking on uh, your front door, unfortunately, if you're living across parts of the, the panhandle, Alabama, Mississippi, or Louisiana. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to show spaghettis today uh, because I, they're kind of, it's still a little too early for that. But most of them, again, have pivoted northeast, and this is just something we're going to have to watch. Uh, we've got another one, again, a 94L is back here with only a 10% chance of development as we head to the next two to five days. We're not as concerned with 94L as we are the one back in behind it, which is coming off the African coast near the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, this one's going to slide to basically where 94L is right now. And as we'll see in the modeling, this one may have a better chance of doing something eventually. Okay, so here's 95L again hanging out in the uh, Bahamas. And we've got some dry air in here. This is, uh, we saw that on the water vapor associated with that area of mid level. Uh, low pressure. And then we got the stuff, uh, the riffraff down toward the Bay of Campeche out here. We've got 94L and then the wave back in behind that. And like always, I'm going to try my best to kind of pivot myself in between uh, everything. Okay, uh, here goes 95L kind of up the spine of Florida, loosely organized, however organized, as it crosses over Florida and into the Gulf of Mexico. Remember, like I said yesterday, with Dorian, we were seeing a big batch of red in here. And when you've only got a little bit of orange and not that much organization in here. So 95L may still be 95L at this point. However, 
if we get enough of an area of low pressure with this, they'll probably issue that potential tropical cyclone stuff. So it'll actually be PTC, what would that be? Number 10, 11, something like that. Um, and they'll go with the PTC. So you'll actually get a cone on here. You'll get little, maybe some advisories or some warnings and some watches uh, posted along the coast of Florida, perhaps even as far as the west coast of Florida or even into the northern Gulf Coast. But you may even uh, eventually see a cone out of this. Okay. 94L falls apart as it reaches the greater and lesser Antilles. And then that next wave, which is uh, back in behind it, we'll set this into motion again. There's the wave that's back in behind it, looking a little better organized as it crosses over the greater and lesser Antilles. And then we've got uh, Invest 95L or whatever happens with it. Uh, kind of moving ashore and moving into the southeast, bringing rain to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Georgia, and Florida by the time we get towards Sunday and into Monday. Uh, so uh, this one's probably not going to have much time over the Gulf of Mexico. It's probably not going to have much time in general to get itself organized. A lot like Ferdinand just a couple of days ago, uh, I got on here and said, I don't know that it has enough time to do anything. It did, barely, before it ran ashore, but that didn't change the impacts, right? The, the impacts are going to be all the same. Rain, maybe some gusty wind uh, as it moves through, and the potential for, depending on how things shake out, some brief tornadoes. That's the best we can do with impacts uh, for uh, Invest 95L at this point. And then this next wave, which moves again across uh, parts of Puerto Rico and perhaps Hispaniola and toward the Bahamas, uh, as we head through uh, Thursday of next week, according to this one model, then there's a wave back in behind that that may also get itself a little better organized. Well, that's the GFS. That's the American model. Let's look at the European model, see if it says anything different. Uh, well, here we go through uh, Thursday this week. There's uh, 95L, 94L, and the wave back in behind that. Set this into motion. Uh, this one has it uh, kind of going a little more up the spine of Florida by Sunday overnight, uh, Saturday and into Sunday morning. 94L falls apart. The wave back in behind that and maybe gets a little better organized. And then there's actually on the European, the next wave back in behind that coming off the African coast that it does something with. The other thing of note on here with the European model is that it actually has a little, a little, that, that upper level low that's kind of that retrograding back off to the southwest. It has that kind of pick up a little bit of juice as it heads toward Florida and maybe get a little better organized in the lower levels as well. Again, this wouldn't mean anything in terms of, I don't believe, mean anything in terms of uh, organization, development, something in the tropics, but nevertheless, it does mean probably some better chances for rain uh, for you folks along the Texas coast as we head through Sunday and into Monday. There goes 95L, moves ashore uh, on Monday, according to the European model, so about 12 to 24 hours later than the American. And then this one has uh, the next wave, not 94 or not 94L, that one falling apart. This is the wave back in behind it doing something. And then the wave back in behind that actually falls apart as we head through Wednesday. And how we go through Thursday, 95L gone. Uh, that next wave into the Bahamas, the wave behind that falls apart. And then another wave comes off the African coast that may be worth watching as well. So things are, are reasonably active in the tropics, nothing imminent and, and nothing uh, crazy destructive, but also not nothing, unfortunately. Uh, so we got a couple of areas to watch as we head through the next couple of days. If you're living along the Gulf Coast, please keep up with the forecast. You can either watch these videos or as we get closer to potential impacts, make sure you check out uh, your local media if you're not in the uh, WDAM TV market. Find your local media outlet and uh, get with them and see what's going on. Uh, get with local emergency management to see uh, what you may need to do, if anything at all, comes of anything out of 94, 95, or that other tropical wave. So there's a look at your tropical update for uh, September 11th of uh, 2019, brought to you by the good folks at Pine Belt Gutters.